Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to the 27th anniversary of the National Council on U.S.-Arab Relations Policymakers Conference. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce our next speaker, a gentleman who has been an enthusiastic and generous supporter of the National Council's educational efforts. We applaud and thank you, Mr. Abunain, for that. The Honorable Mohammed Abunain is joined this morning by his family, Mrs. Amal over there, and his three children. Welcome. The Abunain family hails here from Cairo, Egypt. A summary of our speaker's bio is in your booklet. However, I would like to highlight a few of his vast and impressive professional accomplishments. He started out with an inauspicious company founded in 1986 manufacturing ceramic tiles. The conglomerate he has since built is known as the Cleopatra Group. Notwithstanding economic challenges currently faced by Egypt, Mr. Abunain's business endeavors have undoubtedly contributed significantly to Egypt's economic sector. Some of Abunain's Cleopatra Group ventures include agricultural development. Abunain is a pioneer in desert reclamation and farming in remote parts of Egypt. In tourism and real estate, he has developed shopping malls, hotels, resorts, in places like Sharm el Sheikh, little known place in the middle of Egypt, where he enjoys, where he has employed hundreds of Egyptians. It's important indeed to note that human development is a key component of Abu Nain's business model. Cleopatra Media, both television and online website, <coughs> competes with the best in the Arab world media. Aviation and Cleopatra Silicon Valley Smart Card Factory round out Abunain's business ventures. The Honorable Abunain has also been active in public, political, life, and civil engagements. Beginning in 1995, he was a member of the People's Assembly of Egypt and served as chair of the Industry, Housing, Utilities, and Energy Committees. He is currently Vice President of the Egypt-Japan Business Council and Board Member of the Arab Thought Foundation. The, lastly, Mohammed Abunain is the recipient of a number of international awards, both in Egypt and internationally. Uh, this morning, we seek Mr. Abunain's wisdom in helping us understand which way Egypt-US relations are headed. This relationship has had its ups and downs, as all of you may know. Though Egypt was once a regional, a key regional power indispensable to US-Egyptian relations. Indeed, Egypt is a recipient of $1.3 billion in US assistance. That is only second in US foreign assistance aid, first one being Israel. Let me stop here and call Mr. Abunain to the podium. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everybody. Mr. John Duke, Anthony, Miss Elizabeth Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me today to be attending this meeting in the occasion of the 27th annual meeting for this council, which we start to feel that this is our home. The council, with all his effort, which is keen among the 27 years, is giving a proof that the serious council would like to add and would like to confront all the problems in order to see what we can do. Indeed, as much as I'm happy for all the progress which happened in Egypt, as much as I am sad for what happened in the Middle East, today, talking about Egypt, after four years since 
the revolution of 2013, after passing from 2011-2013, this nightmare time which passed to the Middle East. Egypt started to think well what's happened around, where we shall end it. And we find that there's a lot of plan, hidden plan, in pipeline just to destroy states, just to divide states, just to make a great problem for Middle East. Luckily, Egyptian will, with our military, confront this challenge strongly. We decided to make and to build modern Egypt. Modern Egypt with a new vision. The vision which is withdraw for 2030 started three years ago. And I, I can assure you that every day past Egypt is changing in the right track. It is a successful model that has to be studied well. Because all the stories happen in the Middle East with all the failure of the government, with all the divided states and the tourism happen in Egypt. But there is a great difference between what happened in Egypt and what happened in Syria, what happened in Libya, what happened in Iraq, what happened in Palestine. I think Middle East is asking the international community where you are. A lot of discussion happened in the United Nations, and I was attended many, many meetings there. And many conferences, many meetings for the leaders, European, even here, even in Europe, talking about the future of the Middle East. But what happened until now? I'm asking, when the refugees go back home, when the refugees of Syrian and Libyan and Palestinian will be back home. I believe it is the responsibility of all of us, people, government, leaders, institutions, United Nations, has to move. And the movement, I can assure you, is for, all the, for the benefits of all the others together. Egypt, four years ago, was planned to be divided and to be fallen down. But when we discover earlier the story and the revolution which happened in January 2011, stolen to other people to take it in another direction. But the people, Egyptian people, say, no, we are Egyptian. We have our civilization and determination. We know where to go. We will not allow anybody to interfere in our internal appearance. We will not allow anybody to order us to do something. Or other peoples come under the umbrella of Islam to say a false information about Islam. And they are bad example of the Islamic people. We say, no, we know very well. We are Muslim. Men. And we are proud to be Muslim. But we have to say, the moderate Islam is respecting all the other religions, is respecting all the people, for, for the, the right of all the people, not to attack the people, or not to take the right of the others, or to interfere also to the other affairs. We start to confront the terrorism. You cannot imagine what happened in Egypt, what was planned. The plan was to transfer Tora Bora with all the training sessions and training places there for the tourism to be in Sinai. 
Sinai, the holy land, which God talked with Musa, with the religions, go there, became the place which are training the tourism there. It is a shame. When we understand this story, we try after the revolution to enter to see what's happening. The tourism is already built themselves, their basement in this area, inside the caves. And one of the caves was 60 kilometer by 60 kilometer. Can you imagine this area for what and to do what? Do you think the people which are there is going to attack whom? Is going to be trained for whom? For European, which one hour distance? One hour to be there. I think thanks to our military. Thanks to our armed forces, which we make lately, Sinai to, to, uh, to uh, 2018. They succeed, and I'm proud to tell you that now they are surrounding this tourism, which is connected underground with tunnel everywhere together. They are surrounding them in less than 1% in Sinai. This is a great success. And when we do this, and we succeed to, do, to, to, to achieve this, is achievement for all the world worldwide. Not only to protect ourselves, tourism is not only for Egypt, it's also for outside Egypt. We are protecting the worldwide. Egypt today, as much as she is confronting the tourism, has a plan also. Plan to communicate with the youth, to communicate with the foreigners, to, co to communicate with the international community with the facts about Islam which addressed a lot of messages, which misunderstanding, which published in a bad way, with a negative message for the Islam. The view has to understand that Islam is innocent from all these messages bad against Islam. We try to correct it, and we succeed in many fields to correct it. We start to talk about our development. Imagine that the investment at that time in Egypt was zero. No investment in 2013. After the revolution, we start to communicate our friend. And luckily, that we have President Trump in America. is a real friend, which support Egypt. Understand the real situation. Maybe before him, with a lot of false information around, published even here, was not true. But luckily, that President Trump, with a wonderful relationship with President Sisi, they understand each other. And they start to see the future of the Middle East. The vision of Egypt is going ahead. And today, I can assure you, our good relation with America, with Russia, with China, with Africa, is giving a fruitful um, and mutual business results together. I think today investment is growing up. As you see now, in four years, 11,000 different projects in different fields, 20 different cities in Cairo, Admi administrative city, which is equal double of Ka existing Cairo today. As you see, reclamation of 1,500,000 Fidan. As you see, others and others and other projects. This is the successful model. This is Egypt today. One week ago, 44 American companies was visiting Egypt. And they are proud to see what's happening. Gas exploration, petrol exploration, the future, the industrial, the future in industries for petrochemicals, the renewable energies, and many other sectors for education and healthcare are ready to, to invite the investors. I am happy, really happy today 
to see that Egypt in the map of their international investment and people understand that security and stability is there. Today, Egypt is safe and has a great plan and a great vision. And I invite you all one time to go to see Egypt and to enjoy, to enjoy everything in Egypt, the, hist the history, the culture, the investment. And also the Egyptian people are kind people. They are peacemaker. They like everybody worldwide. Indeed, a lot of talk, and I'm happy to talk, but I'm happy also to receive any questions of you to answer it. Thank you very much. Speaker has agreed to take a few questions, and some have been sent up. Um, you have addressed a few of these, but uh, they're probably repeating. How can Egypt recover from the void and shock left by the Brotherhood? That's by the Brotherhood. Brother, okay. Yes. Question number one. I think you should answer that before we yeah, go to the next question. Yes. Um, how, how can Egypt? Okay. Just a second. And let, uh, did you ask you all three of them? No, no, I didn't. So we're going to ask six, six questions. Six questions. And you choose any two. Okay. 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 No problem. Ask. As well. As well. Okay. I'm ready to answer all the questions. Right. No problem. Tell us about the Suez Canal project. What does the expansion mean for Egyptian economy? Second question. Third question. How do you see the diversification of foreign investment from China, Japan, Russia, and other countries in Egypt, specifically in the mega project? Okay, this is a great question. These are three huh? questions. Yeah. This is your, your question? This is, I think no, 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 yours are coming. Yes. Okay. Three questions from, three questions, is this on? Three questions from this side. Uh, one is that the Camp David uh, uh, Treaty of 1979 raised such high hopes, not just for Egyptians and Israelis um, as partners to the treaty, but the world as a whole. Um, many people look back on it and uh, say it was good for Egypt to recover its territory, almost all of it at the time. It was a small area down near the uh, Israeli port that took a while to get back. Uh, but the Israelis were stopped from exploiting Egypt's oil and gas wells, and the Suez Canal reopened uh, even before the uh, treaty was signed, but it was closed for eight years uh, as a result of the Israeli attack on, on uh, Egypt. Uh, June 67, most people think it happened the other way around. And they know it happened just as I stated it. Um, Palestine did not get addressed in those accords, except with lip service. And Jerusalem didn't get addressed, if at all, even with lip service in those accords. So revisit that treaty. And secondly, Egypt's relations with Libya. Um, historically, it's been an interesting one. Right now, it's a controversial one. And lastly, water. Uh, you don't produce most of, if any, of the water that goes into the Nile, except perhaps wastewater. That you're dependent upon the Sudan and Ethiopia. And they, in turn, are dependent upon Uganda and further deep into Africa. What are you doing about that? Okay, thank you, Mr. Anthony. Indeed, the question is, is very intelligent question, and it seems that he is studying well what's happening in the area. Okay, talking about gas. Mm -hmm. Luckily, that the gas in Egypt finally amend. You know, I was head. I was the head of the uh, industrial committee in the parliament. Then a lot of project for exploration of gas came, and the people invest a lot of money, and they didn't, they didn't find a gas because the agreement is only, only to go to a certain level. Uh, I think it was 1,200 meters uh, 
on the ground. And other people say, maybe we go deeper, we find the gas. And this is what was true. I think two years ago, came Italian company called INI. INI is one of the most important company in, in Europe for gas. And they discover a huge amount of gas when they reach 1,350 meters underground. This it was a big tank for gas, which is a part of, of it to us, and the other part belongs to Cyprus, and the other part belongs to uh, Greece. We make agreement together, and we start to divide, and we take our right, and any the project which should be, take, be done in four years, they do they done it in two years. And during, during the, 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 the work, now Zoh, which is done by INI, is in production totally. And during the, the, the finishing the, the, the project, they find a huge amount also another from another one called Noor. It's three double Zohr. Now they start to, produce, to also to work. I'm happy to say this because this is a great opportunity also for the American company. American company can have a great experience in this field and they can do a lot. And this is also <clears throat> the future industries that they can make a petrochemical industry for, 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 the, for, the, uh, for the gas. Uh, Israel and also Lebanon in the other part up has the same. They are happy that they find a huge also amount there. And the future for this area will be a future for the gas. So this is the good news for the people which can also study to invest, all the people which can also see what they can do in this area. Concerning the gas, we start already to plan that Egypt has a hub for gas production and gas also exploration and gas production for the chemical as a, as a raw material for petrochemicals. Today, I think Indian companies, Chinese companies, Italian companies, German companies, and American companies are there to make something there for a huge investment. Uh, I think this is okay for the gas? Yes. Okay. That's okay. The second concerning the water. You know, among the history, the, the River Nile is coming from different countries from Africa, and they arrive to Egypt. Then. Our agreement is 55 million, uh, million cubic meter per year. Uh, the people there start to say, okay, this is an old agreement and we would like to make some dams. Of course, to make dams in the area, in, in Ethiopia, they have to fill the dams and the, the filling of the dams takes three years to be filled. The question, during the filling of the dam for three years, what's going to happen for us? It's going to affect the quantity which should come to us. This is a negotiation. It was the prime minister a little bit harder, and he doesn't like to negotiate, and he proceeds even without taking permission, because legally, he cannot start to make any dams unless we have agreement. But he, without agreement, start. And we say, no, this is not an agreement. Anyway, we discuss with them until we find a compromise to start to make the agreement, a new agreement that he can do it, and also, but. Uh, uh, he, he has to, to respect the quantity which is coming to Egypt. And I think with the new prime minister, we agree for that. And this is also solve a big problem which could, could happen with, with Ethiopia. Uh, Libya. You ask also for Libya. Sure answer. Okay. Libya, you know, is tourism are there, Daesh are there, and it's time that the people get rid of Daesh. The same as Syria, there is 30,000 Daesh there. Libya has some Daesh. And I think we know all the information as Egyptian secret service. And we apply it to everybody who needs the information. This is the rule of Egypt in the area. As you see, that's very strong and very important rule. Egypt doing it in, the, in all the Middle East. Libya has some decisions done, issued by United Nations. And this is a decision which is suitable, that the people have to come together in one government and to form the new constitution and to start again. This is, and also, of course, you cannot eliminate the legal people which protect in Libya from supplying the weapons. 
these people have to be supported because this is the legality of Libya with, with their parliament. If you go ahead with this solution, it would be solved the problem. If not, because a lot now, you have to understand that what happened in Libya and what happened in Syria are proxy war. The confrontation which you see, there is a other states behind them. And this is the thing is which is very important to know. This, this is a short answer, but of course, if you need more answer, no, no, we can no, talk more. Uh, okay, I think you... Because the, uh, the next session, we'll, yes. we'll ask some of the ones that we haven't asked you, because the next session also has to do with Egypt. Uh, okay, but I'm not there. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. Do you, have, yeah. do you ask me for that? Um, yes, foreign, uh, foreign investment, diversification. Okay, Suez Canal. You know Suez Canal? We make a miracle, by all means. Suez Canal, the first channel, was, ca was done in 120 years. The second channel is done in one year. One year, 30, 365 days. This is a market. This is the will. This is the management. And all is financed by Egyptian power. President Sisi say, I need this one to be done. In one year, we go to finance. He called the people. The people go into the bank for seven days. They deposit. 64 billion Egyptian pounds. Hmm. And this was enough to finance the project. This project is doing what? First of all, is facilitate going and coming for the boats. This is reduced time, reduced cost for the international navigation and international marine. Second, among the seaside of the Suez Canal, there is industrial zones. This industrial zone, today, there is Russian industrial zone. There is Chinese industrial zone. Yesterday before, President Sisi was in Germany. They signed a German industrial zone. Why not American industrial zone for the future? This is another call for America. Go there to have your industrial zone, because tomorrow probably there is a good location. Tomorrow you will not find it. And I'm urging the American people to think about industri American industrial zone with the Suez Canal. This, is, this area has a special economic zone. This area has a special law, which gives you a lot of privileges to encourage you to be in this area. This is, in general, the information. But a lot of other details we can talk, if any other, because he is, is okay. urging me to finish. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Please help me. Thank you. Thank you very much.